All right. Welcome, everybody, to the last keynote of the second day of the Reshape Intensive in Cluj. Um, welcome, everybody, the Reshapers, the partners, everybody involved in the project, and hopefully also a lot of people from the, the local uh, arts community in Cluj for this keynote. Um, maybe for those that are not that um, acquainted with the project. So we have five days of an intensive program here, uh, five groups of artists, activists, people trying to reshape uh, the way we organize arts in society are here to develop ideas together. And we also developed from the partnership a series of uh, workshops and keynotes uh, to inspire. The title of today is Solidarity on a planetary scale. We'll talk more about that, but first let me interview, uh, uh, introduce our eminent speaker, uh, Oksana Timofeva, who is going to um, well provoke our thoughts in the next uh, one and a half hour. So Oksana is a professor of, uh, uh, at the Department of Sociology and Philosophy at the European University of St. Petersburg. So she has a wide range of uh, research interests and she's a very prolific writer. She has a wide range of topics that she can choose uh, from to drop here in this uh, group of uh, reshapers and uh, the local arts community. Um, so that is uh, a luxury for us, but her experience goes even further. What's also relevant is uh, Oksana has been involved for quite some time in Stodelat, if I pronounce it correctly. It's, uh, a collective of artists, philosophers, activists, even one choreographer, I think, from St. Petersburg. This collective has been active since 2003 in St. Petersburg and has uh, taken a number of uh, really relevant initiatives that are very inspiring also for the ideas that uh, uh, the Reshape groups are working on. So that is uh, apart from the, the concepts that uh, Oksana will give to us uh, another uh, approach for what we uh, could then uh, elaborate in a talk. Um, because that is indeed what we are going to do. We are having a keynote now, but we are going to make it interactive. Uh, Oksana will uh, deliver a presentation. Uh, I have some questions afterwards to warm up, but of course the idea is that, uh, that we have a debate here with the group uh, about the ideas that are put on the table. So, as I already said, uh, Oksana, told me when she arrived on Sunday that she had multiple directions that she could uh, take for this keynote. In the program, there is uh, a text about solidarity on a planetary scale. But yesterday, somehow, after being here and hearing the discussions, you decided to uh, twist that a little bit. But I will uh, let you yourself introduce how you see that, uh, Oksana, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for this beautiful introduction and uh, uh, welcome uh, everybody. I'm glad to be a part of this very nice, uh, huge gathering. Um, and uh, I uh, have to say that uh, that I wanted at the beginning, I wanted to uh, to speak about something, uh, something different about science and technique and nature. Uh, but uh, the, the spirit and the air of uh, Transylvania uh, pushes me rather in the direction of mystery and magic. Uh, also, when I, when I was uh, still in Moscow three days ago, a friend of mine, um, uh, when, I, uh, when I told him that I'm going to Cluj, uh, he said, uh, oh, you will like it there, there are so many witches. Uh, and uh, in, in the region, he was from originally from somewhere around here. Um, so this is one spirit, and the other spirit that accompanies uh, these uh, sessions is the one of uh, revolution, Lebanese revolution, for, for instance, uh, to which many of us, uh, me included, uh, refer to various uh, context. Uh, there are a lot of people that somehow connect and relate themselves to uh, to what's going on in um, in Beirut, in, in Lebanon, uh, and uh, uh, other um, uh, things. Uh, so uh, I will um, 
using a kind of a time loop, I will uh, go back um, uh, 200 and uh, I will refer to another revolution that happens a bit more than uh, 100 uh, years ago and will try to describe a miraculous uh, side of it um, uh, for which the concept of solidarity will be uh, crucial. I will talk about, so I will still talk about solidarity uh, and witchcraft in relation to emancipatory collective practice that will be uh, thus revealed as a kind of political magic. Uh, and uh, I will uh, start from one, um, from one um, case. Uh, in the 1990s, um, right after the collapse of the USSR, uh, the Russian tabloid press burst into a series of mm, uh, kind of expose uh, on leaders on, uh, of uh, the socialist past. A lot of this attention fell on uh, Vladimir Lenin. Uh, as the founder of the state, uh, he became a privileged target, uh, target of all sorts of attacks. Historians and journalists uh, competed to reveal unknown, weird, or unpleasant facts of uh, Lenin's uh, biography. Uh, one recent essay, um, recent essay suggests that Lenin's ancestors came from Western Europe, uh, and more specifically from Germany. And uh, there was an article that claimed that someone in the line of Lenin's, uh, perhaps the leader's great-grandmother, um, was uh, defamed for using black magic um, and witchcraft and burned at the stake by the Inquisi Inquisition. Uh, given the number of people massacred under the same sentence uh, in the uh, 15th, 17th centuries, this story uh, might plainly be true. Uh, my goal is not, however, to do justice to the historical uh, veracity and to investigate whether Lenin um, was a descendant of that particular uh, enigmatic woman or not. I just find intriguing um, the very idea that the revolutionary leader could have been an ancestral uh, witch, witch uh, sorcerer or magician. The superpowers which, as a Soviet child, I, I imagined uh, he had, of course, could have been literally inherited um, from someone who fell victim to the genocide committed under the banners of Christianity at the rise of capitalist modernity. Um, so, uh, there, is, uh, there are some images, yeah. Ah, capitalist modernity. This coincidence uh, does not even uh, look random. Uh, in uh, Caliban and the Witch, uh, Silvia Federici, you know who is Silvia Federici, of course. Uh, yeah, uh, she's great, a great uh, feminist uh, Marxist um, uh, author, uh, and uh, she did this uh, research on witchcraft, the Inquisition, and uh, and the uh, and the accumulation of capital. Uh, she presents uh, the figure of the witch uh, as, a quote, the embodiment of a world of female subjects that capitalism had to destroy. The heretic, the healer, the disobedient um, uh, wife, the woman who dared uh, to live alone, uh, the obe woman uh, who poisoned the master's food and inspired the slaves to revolt. Behind the witch hunt, uh, she uncovers a joint effort uh, by the church and the state to establish mechanisms of gendered control over bodies um, that immanently resisted a um, newly instituted regime of productive and reproductive work. Uh, Inquisition aimed at cutting off all magic potentials that did not fit the scenarios of capitalist developments. The age of reason, as she called it, was a chasing out magic, uh, queer, female, animistic lifestyles. Uh, as Federici explains, and I quote again, at the basis of magic there was an animistic conception of nature that did not admit uh, to any separation between nature and spirit, and thus imagined a cosmos as a living organism populated by occult forces where every element 
was in sympathetic relation with the rest, end of quote. A miracle uh, might have violated the laws of nature, but it did not violate uh, the whole of magic, uh, magic being and thinking. Now, um, now uh, I would like to, you see um, this uh, animistic uh, um, conception um, relates, now I, I can, uh, I can explain what is the connection to the, uh, to the initial title of my talk, uh, Solidarity on, on the Planetary Scale. Uh, I meant uh, planetary, right? Uh, uh, yeah, planetary scale. I did not mean an international solidarity, but uh, I meant uh, this interspecies, interthink, uh, inter-everything uh, solidarity, which is, I will explain also later at the end of my talk. Uh, what is uh, what is this um, what is this thing is all about? Um, uh, but uh, yeah, it has to deal with also what is called the non-human, which is not precisely the not human because it, it's also kind of human. Uh, it's not nothing more human than animistic lifestyles because everything becomes kind of human uh, and uh, mm, and so on. So uh, now I would like to introduce my own uh, my own theory of witchcraft. Well, uh, not uh, really a theory, but a brief note towards a theory um, that might be then accomplished by by uh, by someone else or by, by anybody, <laughs> maybe my, by myself. I don't know. Uh, although this is not uh, an easy task. Uh, in a sense, it is conditioned by my personal uh, experience of being a child so scared by the darkness that the only way out, out of the horror seems to me, seemed to, me uh, to let myself to be fully absorbed uh, by, its an, uh, by its anonymous faceless object and to identify uh, with, this, with the darkness. Um, uh, a little child might want to become a magician when the world that is um, that in the beginning was first so loving and immanent ceases to imme immediately obey all the child's needs and start to live a life of its own her mother who who just who was just here reading a fairy tale now goes out for work and staying alone in her bed, so lonely, the child uh, helplessly waves her hands um, without being able to get the mother back. Uh, at a certain point, it turns out that the desires of the child is not the, o the one and the only law for the adults, and that they observe the laws that, um, that are indifferent to the desires of the child. Uh, a catastrophic, but at the same time necessary and constitutive rupture between myself and the world, which shapes the experience of our early childhood, gets deeper and deeper with the understanding that something goes wrong either with the world or with myself. Everyone has his or her own way to deal uh, with this existential mess. Uh, I propose to differentiate between mm, the two paradigmatic um, uh, strategies of individuals uh, to locate their experiences of being in the world between, uh, between the desire and the law. Religion and magic. Religion helps one to conform to the, to the world and places the desire under the law. Magic, in contrast, invites one to make the world conform to her desire and places the law under its arbitrary rule. Accordingly, our culture knows uh, at least two types of spiritual practices. A child limits herself with a dream to meet on her way a good magician, you know, in the forest. Uh, you meet a good magician uh, and um, becomes religious, establishes a relation of gifts, of gift with God, and expects that God will grant her wish wishes or gods. Another child 
wants to become a magi magician herself, maybe even becomes one, establishes a relation of contract, uh, of exchange, of exchange, uh, not a gift, exchange with the devil, uh, and gives him the soul or provides another service uh, in order to be a master and grant any wishes, wishes herself. The one becomes a magician who is ready to make an inhuman effort in order to bring the world to conformity with her desires. She becomes a witch uh, out of injury, resentment, weakness, despair, uh, melancholy, envy, jealousy, loneliness, irreversibility of death uh, or poverty. And when I was, when I was uh, young and, and super poor, I wanted to obtain by sorcery 500 rubles in order to buy a sweater. Uh, and I remember this very well. I remember the sweater, it was so good, and I was just looking around and thinking about this 500 um, uh, <laughs> rubles banknote. Uh, I was searching for it everywhere. I, I thought it must be somewhere for me, but I, I didn't. Um, one also becomes a magician out of boredom just to avoid be, being a Philistine. The main source of magic um, force is her belief in herself that she acquires maybe precisely at these moments of lost and catastrophe, um, catastrophe and uh, desperately, desperately wants to do at any cost what others cannot, uh, to awaken the dead, to return a beloved one, to revenge, to turn the time back and to redeem a fatal error in the past. One becomes a magician who learns that something is fundamentally wrong uh, or that the world is unjust and that this order of things can be miracul miraculously reshaped. A witch needs a superpower and certain skills that exceed those of ordinary humans. Witchcraft is forbidden uh, because the very fact of being a witch violates natural or, um, um, or social law that allocates play, a place and time for everyone and everything. Uh, there are bugs and holes in being with, uh, which, uh, which is um, pluck with their own bodies. Um, witches are therefore alien. Uh, they partly belong to another world, uh, or one might say uh, she has another world, uh, or even nothingness itself, behind her back. Therefore, it is said that witches do not have a back side. Uh, there is nothingness behind. Uh, and this is why it is so difficult to hunt her in some of the legends. The moment she turns back to you, uh, she disappears. Uh, I agree with uh, Federici uh, that the persecution of witches comprised a massive gendered violence, at the center of which were mostly women, not women although many men too uh, were burned. No. Uh, here, however, I would like to make a, a difference between real victim, uh, victims of um, inquisition that were accused uh, in witchcraft and the witch more generally, or like a conceptual persona, um, the magician or the sorcerer, the bordering figure whose body is ne neither male nor female, neither animal nor human, neither young nor old, neither alive nor dead. Um, it, is, uh, it is perfectly queer. Uh, witches can transform into birds, frogs, snakes, um, etc. They can be anything, uh, but nevertheless, the world always remains intolerant to them between uh, something that is and something that is not, uh, that is nothing, their bodies bear within them that active part of the non-being that we call desire. Uh, seeing a naked woman flying on a, uh, on a broom at night, an ordinary human being might think that this desire is kind of sexual, 
but it is indeed more than that. A witch's uh, desire is uh, ontological, so to say. It must be strong enough to provide a superpower uh, necessary for transforming something that is not into something that is. Uh, the non-being into being, or the other way around, to trigger rain, uh, to raise the dead, uh, etc. Such transformation is uh, called uh, a miracle. Miracle. At this point, I would like to um, uh, back to the figure of Lenin, the witch, uh, that uh, infinitely inspires me. I don't remember, oh no, not this. Um, that infinitely inspires me. Among many things, um, uh, what uh, he definitely inherited from his uh, alleged uh, gra great grandmother, uh, who might do what? Uh, healing the sick, performing abortions, uh, cooking love potions, uh, or who may um, have lived alone in the woods, um, talking to the beasts, uh, whatever. So, was his insistence that miracles are possible? It is possible to make something out of nothing. That is, to transform something that is not into something that is. Uh, to bring something into being from the non-being. As noted by uh, Ronald Burr, uh, a researcher who is working on, on, uh, on political theology and uh, also political theological motives in Lenin's uh, writings uh, and politics. Uh, in his study, Lenin, Religion and Theology, sees in the notion of the miracle a crucial dimension of Lenin's approach to revolution. Um, so he said that Lenin used to say that intelligent people do not believe in miracles that happen all of a sudden. However, at the same time, Lenin developed uh, uh, his alternative conception of the miracle, insisting that people uh, can perform them if they are enthusiastic enough, um, if they are energetic and capable of making a supreme effort. Such miracles do not, uh, do not simply happen and cannot be ascribed to God or other uh, supreme being. Uh, they are performed by real people themselves. Most notably, in, in this perspective, Lenin famously said that a revolution is a miracle. There is this nice, um, well, this um, um, nice, I don't know, funny comparison. You know, Alistair Crowley was saying, every man and every woman is a star. Uh, for Lenin, every uh, comrade uh, is, a, is a kind of magician. Um, on, one, uh, on one very important um, condition, which I explain um, in a few, m in a minute. Uh, so, in uh, 1917, Lenin wrote that, uh, I quote, there are no miracles in nature or history, but every abrupt turn in history, that, that, um, and this applies to every revolution, presents such a wealth of content, unfolds such an unexpected and specific combinations of forms of struggle uh, and, um, and the alignment of forces um, of the contestants uh, that to the lay mind, uh, mind there is much that must appear miraculous. Miraculous, end of quote. Uh, and there are so many quotes like this. Lenin really, really uses this word miracle quite often when he's talking about the, the working class, the revolutionaries, the people, the people. According to Bohr, uh, Lenin's overt usage of miracles lays its emphasis on human energy, effort, and enthusiasm. Yet it requires stupendous moments for such miracles to occur, moments that evoke superhuman effort from, from those who did, know, uh, did not know they could do such. End of quote. I would like to put an emphasis on Bohr's choice of the word superhuman, superhuman. Uh, there is a clearly Nietzschean uh, moment in, evoked in Lenin's uh, 
politics. Human, all to human being, is a subject to overcome, uh, to sublate. In this interpretation, a key, no, uh, a key notion of Lenin's equation of revolution and miracle is the tension between organization and spontaneity, between the so-called party avant-garde and the spontaneity uh, of the people. Uh, organization and spontaneity are the two terms um, of a dialectical opposition, uh, and what appears miraculous is their uh, synthesis, uh, their uh, coincidence. Uh, so the party and the people, the organization and spontaneity, they, they contradict each other and then at some point they coincide and, and, uh, and a miracle happens, a political miracle happens. Uh, that is where uh, not a political uh, technique, but a political magic begins. Here, a crucial difference must be made between uh, Lenin's magic and the magic of a lonely child uh, from which I began, or a naive, wishful magic of myself bewitching 500 rubles for a sweater. Uh, the novelty brought by Lenin's um, magic is that miracles are possible when they are performed um, um, uh, not by a person, but by a collective, by a people. Uh, the condition of possibility of a miracle in a materialist sense uh, is the collective dimension. A superpower held by the magician, uh, magicians of revolution comes from solidarity and comradeship um, that are the forms of collective engagement different from friendship, love, sisterhood and other things that normally attach us to a singular individual or singular individuals. Um, who has name, face, and something which cannot be replaced. I love this particular uh, man or woman, and, uh, and, it, and she cannot be replaced for, um, by someone else. Uh, and, uh, uh, and a friend of mine is this particular person. It's totally irreplaceable, but with comradeship, uh, things are different. No. So, a friend or a beloved one are pinned down uh, by their identity. In comradeship, identity vanishes. Uh, I love this, uh, yeah, I love this person, but my comrades are treated anonymously and equally regard, uh, regardless of whom they are. And uh, you know this feeling, uh, well, who is a comrade? Sometimes I have quite many friends on Facebook. They're called friends there. They have names, nicknames, whatever. It's not necessarily that I know them personally, but they are kind of Facebook friends, Facebook friendship. But uh, some of those friends are comrades. I never saw them. I just know these are comrades. Uh, and they have like, uh, and the comrades is, a, is an irreducible multiplicity. They are so multiple because b behind that comrade, say in, I, I don't know, uh, in, in, uh, in Cairo, uh, there are like 5,000 of other comrades in Egypt, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, it's always uh, this, uh, this funny uh, kind of multiplication of, uh, of um, subjects, <laughs> um, regardless of whom they are. Lenin and uh, other so-called professional revolutionaries worked in the underground. This was called conspiratia, conspiratia. Not, to, uh, not to confuse with the conspiracy, it's a different thing. Uh, according to Lars Lee, uh, in that particular historical context, Conspiracy means uh, the set of rules by which you do not get yourself arrested by the police or the fine art of not getting arrested, Lenin's words. The fine, conspiracy is the fine art of not getting arrested. Uh, sometimes, well, when I say this, this is all, all very relevant to, 
to Russia or Turkey, to um, our context of, of a current political um, and, uh, not so very happy disposition. Uh, yeah, mm, but I maybe explain it within the discussion. Sometimes people forget that Lenin was uh, an underground nickname of a person actually, actually called uh, Vladimir Ulyanov. Bolsheviks in Konspirazia lived uh, faked social lives under different names, uh, constantly changing their passports, uh, families, appearances, or even genders. What connected them uh, was that they, that they were all comrades. According to Jody Dean, um, another brilliant um, researcher uh, who uh, just recently uh, published a book called uh, a Comrade, a comrade uh, and with whom we are in a conversation about, we were in conversations for, uh, for some year, quite some years about this topic. Uh, she says that a comrade is one of many fighting on the same side. This is one definition. I have to complement this, this theory with some details that relates to the metamorphic and miraculous moments uh, in comradeship. Comrades are replaceable, as I said. They are replaceable. Sounds awful, right? Um, I, um, uh, I was once, uh, well, I, I, I will say it in the discussion again. Um, there will be another example. Uh, this aspect of the masquerade uh, makes politics a theater replaceable. So uh, now it's me. In two minutes, there will be some other comrade. Uh, and, um, and this is a, a kind of a masquerade. Uh, or I can be um, like hiding from the police wearing like artificial mustaches, something of this kind. Um, makes politics a theater. But this is a very special one. Uh, like uh, Artaud's, Antonin Artaud's um, uh, theater of cruelty. Here, ancient masks are back. Um, uh, as they present the show, a ritual of a direct and instant communication. The mask is more important than the face behind it, if there is one. It directly communicates the effect. We must, and the effective substance that goes, uh, mm, uh, that uh, migrates uh, <laughs> between comrades, uh, behind the masks is, uh, is precisely the solidarity, is an affective substance. Um, this idea just came to my mind, okay, never mind. Uh, so it, uh, we must understand that we live in a society where individualism is recognized as a supreme value. Uh, everyone must have an identity. We are identical in, in that we have all be uh, clearly identified. I am uh, 40 plus, uh, woman, uh, whatever, uh, uh, university professor. Um, and, uh, uh, and comradeship, in a sense, uh, the, the comradeship, uh, uh, in a sense that I'm trying to develop here, transgresses this rule. It breaks with the ident identitarian ideology. And this destructive towards an individual, uh, autonomous person. In comradeship, uh, there is no individual but a set of appearances that runs from one figure to another. Comrade is the one on whose neck you can put uh, your head. Uh, to whom, I mean, on whose neck, when, when your head is cut, <laughs> he can give, give you his, uh, his head. Um, to whom you can give one or of your hands if she has none, and the decisive moment when the enemy attacks. Uh, friendship and love would not sustain such a disturbing act. They are too innocent, too kind for that, too human. It's worth mentioning um, that witch hunt uh, historically coincides with the birth of humanism in its classical sense, um, and then the idea of autonomous um, personality, uh, autonomous uh, person, individual develops, whatever. Um, 
The comradeship transcends the borders of humanity, which immediately, immediately puts it next to uh, sorcery which, with its um, secret alliances, talking to the beasts and, of course, uh, breathtaking naked uh, night flights. Uh, viewed from a feminist perspective, witchcraft uh, comradeship uh, have a potential to transform our natural bodies and ways of enjoyment um, towards a new material and, of course, spiritual alliances uh, with many different things. This points to Timothy Morton's uh, idea of uh, solidarity with the non-human people. Non-human people. In his account, solidarity uh, is not um, something specifically human, but the default affective environment of the top layers of the earth crust. It is very cheap because it is default to the biosphere and very wildly, um, widely available. So it's, every, uh, every, it's not something difficult. It's difficult among humans, yes. This needs some work to do. But among the, uh, among the bee and the flower, it's not difficult, it's basic. Solidarity is like, uh, is the, the simplest thing to get for free everywhere. Um, at least, uh, yeah. This approach uh, falls out um, of post-humanist mainstream um, and it brings uh, ecological thinking together with the communist perspective on the human species as a non-racist, non-speciesist species, potentially. That must be achieved uh, at some point. And this is a very important, mm, important goal, so to say. Uh, the thing that worth to think about uh, seriously. Um, and I was uh, also thinking about it uh, recently. So here is, is about the, 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 uh, the planetary scale. So planetary means uh, uh, not necessarily human. Um, I, here I can refer to Georges Bataille's ideas of two economies. Uh, he was saying there are, there are two economies. One is, uh, uh, is the so-called restricted economy, uh, which is what human beings are doing on Earth. They are, they are businesses. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then the, uh, the non-restricted, the, uh, the general economy, the unlimited. Uh, uh, this is the, the planetary scale where the destruction <laughs> somehow is, um, is always bigger than the accumulation. What, uh, what the sun does, what the, the, the wind does and what the air does, um, and as well as uh, all other living, be living and non-living beings. Um, so, uh, uh, sorcery or witch is, uh, as well as the shaman, for example, is, um, uh, as Viveros de Castro says, is a diplomacy of, uh, of this um, dimension. Uh, the, the witch can be uh, the one who is like a, like a, a medium, an, um, an intermediate uh, uh, person uh, that connects the restricted, the human, with the, the, the unrestricted, the, the general. The general. Um, I was thinking uh, about it when I was taking part in the performance uh, organized by our art collective Stodelec um, in Berlin last summer. Last summer uh, it was, or maybe not even the la last summer. Yeah, last summer. I'm very bad in, uh, so many things happen. I, uh, well, uh, it was a learning play entitled Go and stop the progress, and dedicated to the problem of uh, of uh, conviviality, a term introduced by a Croatian Austrian philosopher Ivan Ilic uh, to designate the creative intercourse of persons with their environment. At the day of the rehearsals, one of the performers came with a dog. They joined the process and went very well with the movements of other participants. There was a lot of movement in this performance, uh, a lot of choreography. Of course, some were saying that the dog 
organically feels uh, somehow choreography of the play and must therefore be um, be taken uh, take part in the performance itself and somewhere more skeptical, um, reminding that it is still an animal and it can get scared or too excited when the audience will come. Uh, the risk was taken and the dog uh, successfully performed, uh, which was not surprising as in, and this is my uh, conviction, animality, animality is performative, artistic, theatrical, uh, or one might say theater, acting, playing is animal. Um, look at the non-human animals. They never stop performing, uh, playing, playing, performing. Whereas humans, uh, human animals only do that on the stage uh, or in some special sites, on special occasions. In this performance, um, I had my own line. I had to read a philosophical lecture um, lying on the table. Uh, as the table uh, also echoed a psychoanalytic couch, it was a mixture of a lecture and a confession. Um, the action took place outside and having my eyes uh, opened, I saw the blue sky and many beautiful big birds in it. Uh, they were uh, my audience as I did not see others. Uh, so in a way I was lecturing to the birds uh, but it did not uh, look like they were listening to me. Uh, we are so much influenced by humanism, uh, we cannot really understand um, that it is somehow possible to talk to, to birds. Oh, divine. Does this mean that I should finish the lecture or is it the last call or something? Yeah, um, the birds. Uh, so I, I'm thinking about the, 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 the St. Francis de Sisi who was talking, preaching to birds. Mm. Uh, we can pretend that we, are, that, that we are talking to birds or moving together with dogs, but we do uh, it for, uh, for the human observer somehow. Uh, among many things, this is what, um, yeah, we, uh, we are playing for the audience. And animals, they are not. They are, I would say, playing for real. They're just playing there, um, whatever happens. Not for the observer, but, but just for real. Among many things, this is what we can learn from them. Uh, if we manage to change the rules of the universalist game without its complete abolishment. Uh, the proof of the fact that we are all animals speaking different languages uh, and that the translation is possible, must be found, not in the practices of inclusion through violent repression, uh, but in arts, in performances, uh, in some interactions between species that are difficult, if not impossible, to formalize, like uh, friendship, comradeship, love and care. Now, this um, sounds uh, a little bit utopian, as the entire capitalist system is based uh, on the slaughter system, uh, but things can change and we ourselves are that things that can and do, uh, and do change. Uh, so comradeship is not an, an easy thing to do. As well as sorcery, it can evoke forces that an individual cannot control. Therefore, they become destructive, like in Goethe's story of a sorcerer's uh, apprentice, um, who then, um, when his old master leaves, uh, initiate, uh, a power, initiates uh, a powerful magic processes that he is not able to stop because he does not know how. Um, reflecting um, in the questions of what does it mean to act, Georges Bataille uh, comments, uh, the sorcerer's uh, apprentice, first of all, does not encounter demands that are any different from those he would encounter on the difficult road of art. Finally, I'm coming to art. <laughs> Indeed, uh, oh well, I've already touched art, so, uh, so no worries, no worries. Art is always here. Um, and um, and uh, indeed, art is the thing that must be immediately addressed with regards to both witchcraft and, uh, and comradeship. 
uh, I would like to refer to the works of my, my comrade, uh, Nikolai Olenika from the group Stodielac, uh, whom I love uh, a lot, um, especially when he depicts weird, monstrous collective bodies breaking the, uh, the continuity of nature for the strangest interspecies alliances. Here are some of his work. Um, alliances. Um, so uh, this is a canvas uh, uh, among numerous objects um, of uh, the two-room installation in Tito's bunker in the mountains near Sarajevo, uh, which is called uh, as, um, Liberation, the, uh, the, Burle the Burlesque Museum, 2015. There is um, a canvas in a modest wooden frame with a big uh, courbet-like vagina from where a realistic brown bull head with the yellow tuck in the ear emerges. And then he's talking, the, uh, the bull, he starts to speak, uh, uh, and uh, and we kind of uh, we kind of believe uh, <laughs> immediately believe what he is saying, although he is saying strange things. Okay, uh, so a penis ends with a mad dog's head. Another picture, which is breaking, uh, barking while its entire body is being masturbated. Uh, from uh, the work Romantic Collection, uh, or a person's face is replaced with an animal head, with a flower, with, with something or someone else. Who are uh, so other pictures? I just found some few, uh, yeah, few. Uh, um, and, uh, uh, and then I I'm asking my comrade, uh, who are all these characters, uh, uh, queer characters? Uh, I ask, and, uh, and she, uh, he replies, they are folks, or they are people, people. Um, this monthly people gathers uh, transgender dancers, bulls, philosophers, horses, cats and dogs, girls, wolves, roses. Fingers, spirits, and ghosts, vampires, and other kinds of living, uh, dead, uh, and of course, undead creatures. Uh, Brecht, Lenin, Gramsci, or Hegel rise from their graves and take their parts among uh, this utopian group of, of people, of the people. Uh, in this impersonal multiplicity, there is no one. What does this uh, no one mean? just to conclude this talk. A structurally impossibility of the one to be. Uh, I'm now making a line to, um, uh, to a previous talk uh, by um, Soraya that I attended here in this room um, two hours ago, uh, three, uh, three hours ago, when she was uh, uh, talking about her experience of initiating um, uh, an organization a political organization, from the zero point of the one person who at the beginning had to pretend that she is many. So she, she was uh, sitting there writing, uh, uh, writing that we are the group of people who want to go to Tahrir Square uh, to be the bodyguards uh, of the women who, uh, who can be uh, there uh, sexually um, raped. Uh, uh, whatever uh, and uh, and the other uh, very nice aspect at the beginning they were wearing a workers um, uh, construction uh, construction workers uh, uniform uh, which is also like uh, I like this theatrical or um, political theatrical part uh, of this uh, organizational um, thing um, so uh, a structural impossibility for the one to be. A comrade is never alone, not in the trivial sense that there is always someone else around who does not let her feel alone. No, being never alone means, uh, means in a more radical sense that you are always many and your name is legion. 
um, that is how you succeed in this fine art of not getting arrested, persecuted, burned alive uh, by the inquisitors of all times. When we are many, we are e equal, we suspend our uh, identities, uh, thus facing nothingness uh, and uh, turning back to the police officer uh, in order to disappear for them. Uh, the anonymity. Uh, we can, for example, all wear the same costumes or wear, all wear the same mask uh, and uh, erase our names from uh, the list of those who came here. Um, so, comradeship as anonymization creates a magic shield against the witch hunters that could catch people one by one but will never manage to destroy the whole set of alliances of the great, of the great so sorcery uh, interspecies alliances and here I was just I, I just wanted to say that, that witches are talking to, to, uh, to birds, and to, but this picture, I just love it. I, I just, th this entire talk was, uh, was um, <laughs> purpose to just to show you this picture that you already saw, of course, but, but uh, this recognition, you know, is, is always a pleasure. Oh, this is from another work by Nikolai Alienikov, the bull. Uh, and this is also the same bull. You see, he is, uh, he is saying, uh, you may, uh, maybe you won't, be, you won't even believe me, but the story goes like that. And then he goes uh, and telling the story about Tito's bunker or something. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, yeah, here is the end of the talk, which is just one of the, the famous Russian mem, uh, meme. Uh, when you do something, uh, you're the magician. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. about uh, solidarity on a planetary scale, as it was in the title, but with a different twist, and we explored many, uh, many different aspects and elements. And, um, well, I must say, uh, the, the approach that you had uh, with uh, the idea of political magic and miracles, it really sparked my imagination, because in my best moments, also in the Reshape project, I think we all want to have a, a revolution and... Uh, and uh, it reminded me, in fact, of uh, something which you might, as reshapers, also recall. When you had to apply to become part of the project, we had a, a number of uh, questions for you. Uh, load up your CV, give us your motivation, that typical questions. But we also had uh, the, the question, do you do magic? So that was uh, one way of, uh, for us to try to scout the right people to create uh, this revolution with us together. So I, th I see a connection there, but also I was uh, challenged and provoked by some of the ideas that you put forward. And uh, what, in fact, what you say is uh, the, with Lenin, the, the miracle, uh, it can only happen through this uh, collective approach. And in this collective approach, it's also a, a, a process of anonymization, of a masquerade, of a conspiracy, the fine art of not getting arrested, so, and the irreplaceability. And somehow, it's difficult for me to relate that also to the process which we are in for several reasons, because it's not something that I associate with art, because to make it in the art field, you need to be visible, you need to be branded, so that is already something. When we asked this question, do you do magic, we were looking for good, well, sparkling personalities and we have a good group of strong people here and I find it difficult to, uh, to think about uh, us here being together as uh, replaceable people. So that is uh, something which is uh, challenging me and maybe uh, you can explain a little bit more what you mean um, because I think yes if you in building a revolution you need specific people with specific skills and an attitude and certain assets so how, uh, can you elaborate a little bit on this idea of anonymity uh, yeah um, first of all um, there is of course um, the idea of anonymity in comradeship understand in a communist way uh, is, uh, is a super heretic for any kind of democratic, uh, uh, I mean, liberal democratic discourse. Uh, uh, 
just but on the one hand uh, yeah it's it's hostile to uh, to the idea of a certain individual as a highest value uh, so it it goes against the grain of uh, contemporary ideology uh, and uh, in this sense it's like almost a crime to say that yeah uh, comradeship is, is about that um, and uh, uh, and it had this also it had these connotations in the Soviet uh, years uh, and some people who who are now like under uh, like who are now um, over uh, older than me they uh, they still remember they were adult when the Soviet Union was still there uh, most of them just hate this word comrade yeah this or oh. Uh, uh, they would prefer to be called something differently. Um, but on the other hand, uh, there is a, a very complex dialectics be between the, uh, this, the irreplaceable and replaceable. Um, but uh, to, to continue with the line of uh, replaceability. Oh, uh, the, uh, and a nice example. A nice example is to be found in uh, um, a film uh, in the comedy film done by Ernst Lubitsch, um, which is called uh, uh, Ninochka. Have you seen this this wonderful uh, film? Oh, this is this is so great! Just uh, just um, tomorrow, on when, whenever you have time, you will you will um, yes, laugh. It's it's so good, uh, and it's a comedy on fascism. Um, and, oh, no, 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 not on fascism, sorry, it's, it's a different one. On fascism is also about comradeship and solidarity, it's even funnier. But here there is one, uh, one scene, one episode in Ninochka, when, uh, so the, the plot is the following. Um, something happens in Paris, uh, and some treasure is stolen, whatever, and, um, and one uh, very important um, functioner, uh, from the Russian state uh, arrives uh, in Paris to deal with the with local people from the Soviet um, embassy uh, and uh, to uh, to make um, a research of what what happened there. Uh, but uh, they do not know those who are in Paris. Um, few men, like three or uh, a group of men, uh, they do not know who will come because they were informed that a comrade will come from Moscow. So they are at the railway station in Paris, waiting for a comrade to come. Then uh, the train arrives, and there is a crowd of people coming. Uh, uh, and they, they are trying to see, like, uh, and they discuss, who can be a comrade? Then there is one person, like, all gray, boring, um, like really serious face uh, walking uh, in such a way that, that they are thinking he is a comrade and they say, oh, maybe, maybe he is a comrade. But then when they are about to approach to him, uh, he kind of making his hand like uh, in, a, in a Nazi's way, um, uh, like a Zikhail way. <laughs> and, then, and then they realize, no, 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 this cannot be a comrade. And at some point, like a beautiful uh, woman, uh, like amazing woman played by Greta Garbo, uh, Gre uh, Greta Garbo uh, approaches. And uh, she, she turns to be a comrade and they, they were like super surprised. <laughs> yes. um, uh, I this, I think th this, uh, this comic moment shows, the, uh, shows this, uh, this funny dialectics. There was an interesting uh, theory uh, by Alexandra Kolontai uh, who uh, in the beginning, uh, in the 20s, uh, was working a lot uh, in elaborating um, a certain ideas for the future love, how love will be under communism. Uh, and his, he had, um, um, uh, he described uh, some uh, historical conceptions of love, some historical um, forms uh, from like love, uh, uh, the medieval times, like bourgeois, marriage, whatever. Uh, and he was talking about love comradeship. Love comradeship, which is a little bit look like if a contemporary re reader 
uh, reads it, uh, it looks like a bit, uh, a bit like um, this, uh, what is it, polyamorous, uh, uh, polyamory, uh, free love. Can you s maybe say that you have different levels of comradeship? Because I, yeah. when, I, when, I, when I hear you also talk about uh, your collective, I understand you're a limited group of nine people. Mm -hmm. So that is one level, but you're also quite active in, in, in really building a community around it. So you also explained me over, uh, over dinner that you keep the collective also limited to a number of people. So, so you're playing with these different levels of comradeship? Yes, yes. Uh, this, is very, uh, yeah, this is very precise what, what you just um, said the, on a practical level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, right, we have a uh, like Stodielet group has a has a core of nine persons uh, that almost never changes, uh, and, uh, and this is uh, somehow uh, this is a unique comradely constellation behind which uh, there is a uh, there is a uh, a platform that that is always on the move. Everything is changes all the time, so there are there are various groups created uh, around, uh, and uh, uh, and the core uh, remains. I did not um, think through philosophically how to explain it, but uh, somehow, yeah, uh, we have an example uh, how uh, how it works. Mm. Yeah, but what's yeah. what I think is very interesting about your collective is indeed that. Uh, well, it's, you, you can see it as a uh, practicing solidarity, but from so many uh, different levels. For instance, knowledge production through, you have a newspaper, uh, you, you stimulate collective reflection, that is one thing, um, but you're also quite active in, in education. So in, in several ways, you are really building a community. Um, we borrowed a lot from, uh, from Lenin's book, mm. which is called Что делать? Uh, and uh, you know he, he he's having this book. Uh, this is a tiny uh, booklet um, where he is talking about what is to be done. And among many things, he says a newspaper has to be published. Uh, so um, uh, and this is the goal of, of the revolutionary organization uh, in a way uh, to uh, make um, while being in cons uh, conspiracia. Uh, to provide as much information as possible. And this is uh, where conspiracy is, uh, is opposed to um, uh, conspiracy. Conspiracy is about hiding information. Conspira conspiracy is about spreading, um, um, spreading information. We are not in the underground, uh, but uh, we uh, learned this principle. The newspaper is a material object that uh, that uh, immediately somehow spreads everywhere and connects uh, people. But connecting people per, uh, per se is not an interesting thing. Sometimes it's, it's even like, mm, it's not good to, co to be connected to too many people. Uh, the, most, uh, the more important thing is to find your people. Uh, it's to find the comrades, uh, which is, again, you have, to, you, fight, you have to find it and you never know who it will be. Maybe it will be like a dragon or, uh, or, or like a, a bird will fly in and, and this will be a comrade disguised as a bird. Uh, uh, so th th this doesn't mean that a comrade is that important. Maybe the, the bird is important because now at this precise moment um, th this bird will, will take you and bring you to to the place where you are needed for the um, for the cause for the revolutionary cause, um, um, right. animals are important. We have some anim animals who are very comradely, comradely treated in our uh, environment in our group. All right, let me maybe open up uh, the discussion to uh, to the room because uh, so many ideas and concepts were introduced that resonate with what the groups are working on. So maybe if you have um, any questions or elaborations or comments. Um, yeah, it's um, uh, connected to, to your question. Um, maybe because I, I identify with uh, a lot of the things you present here, um, uh, but also slightly different, I have um, this concern about extractivism. 
and it's maybe uh, connected to this idea of um, being replaceable. Uh, just to dig a bit further into Extra that. Extractivism? Yeah, I, what will, is this? I will get to it. Yeah. So it's connected to this idea of being replaceable, where uh, from my own experience being active in direct action and, and, and activist groups, uh, uh, you are one is highly replaceable. It's about having a certain amount of bodies doing a certain action in a certain space, or at least within my limited experience with that. And um, what I've seen is that it leads also to a, a sort of um, negligence when it comes to people getting burned out or when it comes to people no longer being capable of doing an action for whatever reason possible. And that being really easily, um, you're out. You're no longer a comrade if your body cannot be present for any reason. So, um, uh, and to me that really is very, um, similar to um, the extractivist tendencies of current uh, neoliberal capitalism where we just take the resources, being it oil or being it human bodies or being it uh, knowledge, and we just burn through it. And the moment you're no longer um, serving the goal well enough, you're put aside. So I wonder within this um, uh, proposal of, of comradeship and, and replaceability within that, which can be also a magic. Uh, where is the space for care? And, is, and what is possibly the relation and the difference between comradeship and kinship, where the specificity of relationality is uh, maybe more uh, uh, visibly present? Um, yeah. Um, we were... Uh discussing in, in St. Petersburg. We were working uh, on these issues um, uh, quite recently this summer, uh, where uh, in the framework in our art school, School of Engaged Art, we were, um, um, we were preparing a big performance on, uh, on comradeship, uh, which was called um, the uh, uh, how is it said? Um, the community with the limited responsibility, right? Economic term. So the uh, limited something. Uh, so we, we, we made it um, uh, like a community uh, with a, a non-limited uh, responsibility. Um, and not the community, a comradeship, the, the, the word which is used uh, usually in Russian, um, this uh, economic business language, uh, comradeship with limited uh, responsibility. We decided to put it like the, the comradeship with unlimited responsibility, which is not about exchange, but is about, um, uh, about gift. So this is, uh, this is um, not about care, because care is a little bit... Uh, Kind of, uh, yeah, uh, care is, um, well, uh, a difficult question. Uh, I, I must say I don't quite trust this word. It's everywhere. This care, uh, I'm, I do care. I don't. When, when you, you actually, you, you, sometimes when the subject is supposed to care, uh, it's, it's another way of saying I don't care, but, but I pretend to care here, uh, um, uh, and uh, it brings uh, a huge personal and emotional component into uh, the situation. Uh, it brings uh, psychology um, into this uh, uh, situation, it brings affects, um, uh, emotional dimension, uh, which somehow corresponds to this new sentimental turn. Um, Everyone uh, is uh, is uh, uh, personally um, like um, endlessly uh, how to say it? yeah. Um, don't you so need that this? Uh, don't you need that emotional aspect also if you're calling up for solidarity um, on a planetary scale also? Uh, the reason I affective, uh, as I said, solidarity is an affective. Uh, what did I say about solidarity? That was an idea that came to my mind with when I was talking affective substance substance uh, yeah uh, but it it is somehow alternative um, to the sentimental um, dimension 
which uh, in within the contemporary um, uh, um, neoliberal environment um, masks uh, a deep alienation between um, individuals that are created by this alienation. Uh, so being care, showing that we are really like separate. I, I am here, you are here. I do care, I don't care about you. Uh, do and don't, you, you know, the language of the unconscious does not know yes, uh, does not know no. So the, 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 the yes and no, they always coincide. If, if I say I do, I probably don't at the same time. Um, and, uh, and my idea is that, uh, and there is this, this presupposition of the idea of the other, that the other is really the other, uh, who is uh, somewhere there. And I am myself, identity. I am identical with myself, but no one is identical with myself. I am the other. I am the other, uh, and uh, uh, the first I'm talking about our collective practices, the first thing we are trying to do when we are, uh, for example, uh, establishing a, a long project, school project, we are trying to break these borders of individuals. We are trying to learn people uh, to uh, be a part of a collective body, to be replaceable in this new sense. Uh, replaceable means, um, yeah, I, um, I can replace the other. In, uh, I, I can replace you if you cannot do that uh, right now. What well, many senses? Well, uh, so um, uh, to be a part of a collective body, uh, to uh, to try this symbiotic, uh, to try this solidarity, uh, uh, which uh, Timothy Mortons uh, describes as one that comes naturally, the cheapest one, uh, uh, the um, the. Not organic, but uh, but like planetary, interspecies, uh, interbodies uh, somehow to um, yeah to, to break this to, to transgress a little bit this dogma of um, of a separate individual. Um, All right. Yeah. Let me maybe try to get back to the room also uh, to see how uh, these ideas resonate with what you have been working on, and specifically I'm thinking of ah uh, yeah yeah. Just um, had a, just something that I would be really interested to hear more from you about um, is around the kind of realm of the digital and how within an animist belief system of of the kind of spirit of the technology or how Haraway talks about this and how this starts to um, shift our sort of you know like nature human da 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 da, da paradigm. I didn't quite understand the question. I would like to hear more about this. You obviously have researched a lot, but it maybe didn't come through so much, but you mentioned sort yeah. of it, but I would ah, you, maybe you a bit more, more about, about this, this element human of it. Human. Okay. Yeah, within a digital kind ah, of... Ah, digital, uh-huh. For me, it was like um, an area that you were sort of touching upon, but didn't articulate, and I, I think it's interesting in relation to what you are talking about. I don't quite know how because I have only just like maybe it just if it is. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a maybe it's a glass of wine conversation. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. yeah, would be nice to uh to give me a little bit uh yeah, to give me a hint uh what what, uh, what because I uh, I do not have immediate uh, ideas about the digital in, in this relation. Uh but uh, we, uh, we are uh, trying to, uh, in this work, uh, last year of work, so to say, uh, in our school, uh, we um, gathered a group of uh, young people, uh, younger people, who didn't live in the Soviet Union, uh, and uh, for whom the word uh, comradeship was absolutely not obvious. They were faced with the challenge to talk about comradeship and solidarity uh, in like uh, contemporary uh, disposition. Uh, and they were trying to apply it to their own lives. So they were saying uh, like, how is it when you are always online? Uh, when uh, you are having uh, like um, uh, 
for example, a collective um, page uh, on Facebook or uh, wherever, you know, you, you can have a collective page uh, where uh, one never knows who wrote, uh, a po who, who did the post, the posting, um, yeah, uh, because it is, let's say that the page is called, I don't know, a black cat. So a black cat writes, tomorrow we will gather at the, at the uh, square, at the red square, Moscow, uh, and um, the black page replies, yes, yes, uh, let's, let's do that, and so on and so forth. Uh, and this subject um, becomes, uh, so the, the black cat um, uh, is, is a collective, which is at the same time which acts as an individual and which actually explains um, uh, what is an individual. Uh, individual, every human being, also non-human being, is a collective. I have a collective <laughs> of myself, of whatever. They are not myself. They are, um, each of them is from somewhere, is from somewhere else. But there is this, this, uh, this funny gathering, and when I'm about to make a decision, uh, there is this, the competition. You know, Conrad Lawrence was a nice uh, ethologist who, um, who did the research on animals, on animal behavior, uh, and he was comparing to, to the animals. He was saying, okay, um, um, human uh, is uh, like having many, many rulers uh, at one, uh, uh, at one uh, ship, uh, let's say, uh, at one uh, uh, vehicle, whatever. Uh, so there are many uh, rulers that, that compete when uh, there is a crucial moment of making decisions, and then one wins. For example, I have several, like my reason is saying, no, no, you should not kiss this person. Uh, and my, my heart is saying, no, no, you should do that. So they compete, one is taking a decision. Uh, and, and there are some others like uh, also, also trying to compete, whereas in animals, he says, Lawrence, a little bit conservative, uh, he's saying in animals um, there is always well, uh, the main and the others, and the others uh, do not compete, so they know what to do at every single moment. Uh, this is not true, animals, uh, we are animals, uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I went somewhere else, but I started from the digital. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, Ross Culture House at the moment. It's called Party of Dead, uh, Party of Dead Men's and uh, uh, Dead Men. And um, the main idea of the group uh, um, in, is uh, that opposition, I opposition circles so tiny, and anyhow we have to extend it. And uh, using um, humans and non-humans um, methodology and magic also, and uh, part of dead men's invite all of dead men's to participate, and they make demonstrations uh, on the street in Saint Petersburg, uh, for example, uh, in the first of May, and uh, also they uh, re reflected to your speech, the same mm -hmm. speech in Saint Petersburg, and they founded a Institute of uh, Personal and Political Magic, and the institute mm -hmm. looking for energy of dead men's in St. Petersburg. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I love them. Uh, it's, uh, it's my favorite, uh, the, the party of the dead. Uh, the, uh, and uh, I was also, this, this is a mutual inspiration. Uh, I, I inspired, endlessly inspired by the practices, uh, and uh, I have an article called The Theater for the Dead, also inspired by Tadeusz Kanter, you know, the Polish director who um, you know, who was working with uh, in the 70s. Um, and uh, um, the idea is that, uh, their idea is that that is always more. They are much, much more than, uh, they are the, the absolute majority. Uh, and they are anonymous, they, they lose their names. Uh, and when the, the, the party of the dead uh, goes to the demonstration, they, uh, they also make uh, the masks like, like dead people, uh, and, um, and thus they represent uh, those who, uh, who died, uh, with whom this uh, absolute injustice happens, happened. Uh, the, there is nothing more unjust than death, uh, and the, the art. This is this is uh, both art and politics uh, in such a radical um, composition uh, that uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah. All right. I give you the honor of the last remark. question <laughs> sadly um, I like all the uh, all this part with becoming other and becoming different which is a great metaphor I think but if I would like to come back to science um, then I would ask uh, being a nihilist and I do not believe that the thinking of the human is the center of the universe and the universe runs like the humans think about it and if we have this interspecies, inter everything, we connect everything in the world uh, for this solidarity, my question is, is there injustice or struggle at a planetary scale or just for some species? Is there injustice and struggle for the different parts that you are trying to, or just to some parts of it? Like the human species definitely knows injustice and we talk about injustice. Some, uh, a lot of animals also. But if you make interplanetary scale, like stardust and rocks, and where is the injustice in those parts? Like, that, that's my question. Oh, Jesus, such a, such a deep philosophical question. That philosophy starts from the question, what is, what is justice? And then, and then it immediately, you know, the, the, the Plato's dialogue, um, Republic. And then the political theory basically emerges. And also like the anthropic uh, principle is introduced deeply into, uh, into politics. Uh, and then, um, so because they only discuss what is just between humans. Uh, and they come to, uh, they start from an idea that justice is the power of the strongest. Uh, and then they, um, uh, and then uh, Socrates proves that it, this is not true. Justice is something else, but, but still. Uh, and this line continues up to now, uh, it's, it's like a, a direction that one, uh, that, um, that justice is always um, discussed in these terms. But recently, of course, this, uh, these notions are, are all criticized, radically criticized from all uh, the, uh, from all 
uh, every corner, uh, and uh, especially the post-colonial and feminist and uh, post-humanist uh, post, uh, uh, discourses um, did a great um, did great uh, things to to change uh, this uh, disposition, um, and uh, there are new notions like uh, like uh, climatic justice or how is it called, the, the ecological justice. Uh, so that not not only in between humans but also in justice, which is linked, for example, to the extractive economy, which you mentioned. Uh, the extractive economy is when we, you you put. Uh, you need to break uh, a certain thing and to get something from there, be it oil or a nut from the shell or the meat from the body of the dead animal or uh, being a truth from the shell of, I don't know, um, affections uh, or uh, our mm, illusions. Uh, this is an extractive approach um, uh, which also can be treated, uh, but but it's a moral question, and then the justice is a, a, not not only a moral question, but also like a, a political question. Um, it's important to keep this um, this distinction uh, and uh, try and, uh, and to try uh, to discuss justice politically without falling into the moral the moral discourses. Um, because when, when we are within this morality thing, um, we uh, we are uh, prey to uh, prey to ideology. We are within within this uh, system, not not kind of uh, not in a magical situation of uh, reshaping the the order of things. Right. How to but say this, this opens up a lot of other mm -hmm. complexities which we will we'll yeah, not yeah. embark on uh, mm -hmm. because our time is uh, over. Uh, I want to thank you, Oksana, for, thank you very uh, for much your for inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> and also you for your attention. And uh, I hope now we can all see each other not only as revolutionaries but also as witches and magicians and maybe also comrades in some respect. Thank you very much.